Push to lock. Good evening. Okay, good evening. It is now 5 3rd 33. We have a quorum. We're going to go go ahead and begin. Um little discombobulated lated here. Okay. Uh let's see here. It is Tuesday June 28th, 2022. This is a reg, reg, regular board meet, meeting of the uh, Adelanto Elementary School Dis, District. And again, the time is now 5.33. That, that's all call, our call to order. Can I get roll, roll call, please? Trustee Eckes? Present. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, present. Trustee Turner? Present. Trustee Webster. Webster present. Trustee Benz. And Benz per present. Uh, le let's please stand to do the pledge of, of, a of a lege allegiance, please. Place your right, right hand over your heart. Ready, be, begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of, of, United America. States of America and to the republic for which it stands indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you. Okay, go go going on to two uh, adopt, adoption of the uh, agenda 2.01 per, per proposed at additions, deletions and adjustments in the order of business. Madam President, we do not have any. Okay, we're going to go go on to two point zero two uh, adopt adoption of the uh, agenda. Can can I get a mo motion, please? I motion to adopt motion. the agenda as stated. Okay. I second. Okay, I'm going to give the mo motion to Trustee Turner, and the sec second to Trustee Eckes. And can, can I get a vote, please? Trustee Webster? Aye. Trustee Turner? Aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Eckes? Aye. Trustee Benz? Benz, aye. Mo motion pa passes, five, zero. zero. Okay, move, moving on to closed ses sessions, de declarations. We will be ta taking I items 3.02 and 3.05 into closed ses session um, and go, go going on to four uh, pub public test testimony I, I believe we we have one one speak speaker and that's uh, Jen Jennifer Raid Raider speak speaking for a ADTA Madam President we do have that little blurb that we want to read Oh, if that's uh, okay. Yes, can can you please read read the the blurpy thing? Yes, thank you, Madam President. The public comment period is administered by state law and is the point in the meeting set aside for members of the public to share their opinions with the board. Open meeting laws do not permit the board to engage in dialogue or answer questions. Protocols for speakers: any person who wishes to address the governing board on closed session agenda items only must complete and submit a speaker request form five minutes before the meeting is called to order. If the comment is about something that is not on the agenda, it will be heard only during the public comment on non-agendized items, period. Once that part of the meeting is over, comments will only be taken on agenda items during the discussion of those items. The board values public comments, and although we cannot take action or discuss items not on the agenda, we listen carefully and appreciate input from the public. Additionally, a public speaker can be cut off for exceeding the allotted time or for willfully causing an actual disruption to the meeting. Before cutting a person off or removing someone, the board will give at least one clear warning. If you were cut off or warned last time, please consider that your warning. Individual speakers are allowed three minutes to address the board on each closed session agenda item. The board limits the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. With board consent, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public presentation depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. The president may take a poll of speakers for or against a particular issue and may ask that additional persons speak only if they have something new to add. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Mr. Krause. If I read that, we'd be here all day. 
All right, Mrs. Rayner. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President, for letting me go. I'm here tonight representing ADTA. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the cabinet and board. I was hoping to come before you today with a glowing report of summer school success, student engagement, and kudos for the administrative classified custodial staff for making it all possible. That is all still true, but it is grossly overshadowed by a huge disappointment in our expected paychecks. Due to some error or glitch, the stipends owed us were not on the July 1st play, play, um, paycheck, but are anticipated for the 15th. This may not seem like a huge deal to you, but it affects us negatively in many ways. It's disrespectful. At the very least, we should have been warned of this happening as soon as the business office realized it. To tell us now is just careless because the district does not care. It does not care that we're negatively affected, that we have made plans that are now affected. This needs to be rectified immediately with checks being cut for our teachers right away. Not next week, not on the 15th, but now. Mistakes happen, certainly, and we understand that. Of course, we show grace, but when you realize you've made a mistake, you correct it by any means possible, as soon as possible. We were promised payment on July 1st for matters agreed upon during our last settlement. This didn't happen, and the district needs to immediately rectify this mistake for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I believe we have no other speak speakers on closed ses session I items, correct? We have three speakers uh, that are, uh, Exania, do they uh, identify as closed session? Uh, no, they're open session. They're open session. Okay. Okay. So no more for closed session at this time, Madam President. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will go go on to recess to close ses session. Um, can can I get a motion? Motion. Webster motion. And I need a sec second. A and Turner a second. second. Okay, I'll give it to Turner. Um, I need need a vote, please. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. Trustee LaFrench, aye. Trustee Eckes? Aye. Trustee Eckes? Aye. Trustee Benz? And Benz, aye. Mo mo motion pa passes. Five zero. The time is now 540. Okay. All right. Good e evening. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I know we've run late. I'm sorry. Sorry, I really, really am. Um, I do need a mo motion to table I item 3.003. Madam President, we do need to reconvene open. Oh, session. yes. I'm sorry. I'm jump jumping ahead. Sorry. Can I get a roll roll call, please? Trustee Webster. Webster present. Trustee Turner? Present. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench present. I'll take note that Trustee Eckes um, left the meeting at 8.06. Trustee Benz? Benz per present. The time is now 8.11. Okay, first thing. Now we're, we have a quorum. So the first thing I need is uh, the board, I, I need a mo motion to table I, item 3.03 to, to have a sec second closed ses session at the end of the meet meeting. The motion. Okay, I got a mo motion from Turner. I need a sec second. Webster seconds. Okay, and please call for the vote. Trustee Webster. Webster, aye. Trustee Turner? Aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz? Benz, aye. Motion, motion pa passes for zero. Okay, going on to seven, seven closed ses session re report. Uh, here we go. The board took action to accept su superintendent Attendant Doc, Dr. Keen, Keenan Mit, Mitchell's res, resignation effect, effective June 3rd, 3rd, 30th, 2022. 
also um the board took a action to approve a set settlement uh agree agreement of one pen pending act action okay i know she's take, taking notes there okay uh let's go ahead and move, move on to eight um pub, public test testimony 8.02 do i have a rep representative from adta yes ma'am Hold on, I don't think you're on. Thank you, good evening again. Um, I want to express my thanks to Mr. Krause, who's uh, promised to look into our issue with the uh, Stipends that were not on the uh, the will not be on the June on the July first paychecks, and I appreciate very much his promise to do everything he can to rectify that situation. I would also like to tell you that summer school has been a joy. It's been going very very well. I have not heard anything uh, negative from any of the campuses. Teachers are having a good time. Kids are having a good time. We're doing art and PE and enrichment and just having a great time. Um, I would like to say specifically about Eagle Ranch, and I also know Gus Franklin falls in this category. They are super clean campuses. They are pristine. It's a joy to, to teach at those schools. They're clean and the cafeteria smells good. It's just, it's, um, we just like to say that Eagle Ranch and Gus Franklin are really, really, really clean schools. So thank you to those custodial staffs. They've worked really, really hard and I made sure that they knew it, that we appreciate that very much. So that's really all I have to add to my earlier comments. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, do, do I have a, a rep representative from CSEA? Yes, Madam President, uh, Mrs. Diane Lynn, who I believe is on Zoom, Mr. Sinatra. Yes, she is. I'm unmuting her now. Uh, good evening, trustees, cabinet, certificated staff, classified staff, and all others attending this meeting. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Moran and his negotiating team for our classified health insurance cap increase, and also for the MOUs that are still being processed. On another issue, um, I have been informed that some of our members that work summer school, also known as the extended school year, aren't getting paid on our June 30th check. We understand that errors do happen and we are all human. However, our contract states under salary um, 5.4 under payroll um, errors. Um, whenever it is determined that an error has been made in the calculation or reporting in any bargaining unit member payroll or in the payment of any bargaining unit member salary, the district shall within five workdays following such determination provide the employee with a statement of the correction and a supplemental um, payment drawn against any available funds. Um, this has happened in the past and a check was issued, and I'm hoping these checks will be issued within the five, uh, the time frame of the five days. Many of our members have made plans and we're counting on this extra salary, especially since our summer school ends on July 1st. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay. Um, do you want me to do this one first? Yes, Madam President, if you will. And then we have three others online. online. Okay, so um, the board calls Re Re Risa Bar Barillas. Bar Bar yes. Thank you, board. Um, I, uh, I feel a little bit like a, it's a punch in the gut that we have yet another superintendent resigning it's five and 10 years now 
it's jarring and it is frustrating that in a time that our kids have experienced so much inconsistency, so much disruption to their lives, we're further disrupting our district. Dr. Mitchell was not above reproach. He was not above criticism, but wow, this is embarrassing. Um, it's also um, a little concerning that the uh, life insurance for um, for trustee members is being increased to 150,000 um, while CSEA bargaining unit members are getting an increase from 20 to 50,000. And when I look at life insurance, I see that as um, the actual value we place on life, numerical value that we place on the life of lives of our personnel. And so it's really jarring that these are the dollar signs we are attaching to our trustees against our actual staff and faculty. Um, far be it for me to ask you to vote against your own personal interests, but it seems wildly inappropriate that this is what we're stating we value. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Yes, Madam President, the next person we'd like to welcome is Mr. John Allen. Mr. Sinatra, do you see Mr. Allen in the Zoom room? Yes, I'm asking him to unmute now. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and my friends beyond the binary. I speak tonight to address the lack of foresight and accountability that this district administration has, has and is currently displaying. Like others who have already spoken tonight, I was shocked to find my paycheck lacking in agreed upon funds. While these stipends are laughable compared to what other surrounding districts have agreed to pay their employees as the cost of living skyrockets, many teachers and faculty have already planned non-refundable vacations, time-sensitive trips, and or dependent on this money to pay for basic necessities, or in my case, the ability to pay for my daughter's birthday party and presents. Not all of us have a $40 million reserve to fall back on. Being told we can fix this in two weeks is irresponsible, untrustworthy, and in the past has cost your faculty considerably more in taxes. We as a district are already hemorrhaging qualified teachers and staff due to what is being coined the great teaser, teacher resignation, yet we remain uncompetitive in the market with fewer and fewer people entering a profession of education. You speak out loud of the many great things you foresee and how you wish to be the shining district on the hill, but your actions and spending habits scream the opposite. Other districts near us with fully paid benefits and higher salaries than us in desperation for teachers have taken to advertising through social media. They're even willing to take all years of experience. If they are struggling to fill positions, imagine the greater struggle that we are gonna face soon. You can and need to do better than this. Your certificated staff is and has been outraged and demoralized for your responses and demoralized and your responses so far have been lackluster at best. For the sake of this district, its staff, and more importantly, its students, you need to do better. This district can no longer afford empty promises, the unwillingness to confront reality, and the constant revolving door of administration and faculty. Remember this now as you fix our missing pay. Remember this when you make decisions. And remember this again when negotiations start again. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. At this time, Madam President, we'd like to call Michelle Walden. Mr. Sinatra, is Ms. Walden in the Zoom? Yes, they are. I'm unmuting them now. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. Good evening, board. This morning, I received a phone call from a teacher in tears because she didn't have her stipend money on her check, and she was wondering if it was just her or if it was everyone. You see, she is continuing her education and has to pay for summer school before she can register for the fall semester. And the money is due now, not in 15 days. After talking with other teachers, we discovered that none of us had received our back pay and no one knew why. Hundreds of emails, texts, phone calls, and social media posts with a lot of questions yet no answer. People with medical procedures, vacations, classes, scheduled projects that can't be done during the school year things that all cost money. 
money we agreed, agreed upon during our negotiations, money that we were told by Mr. Kraus on May 12th, we would receive on July 1st. Money has already come out of our pockets. To receive a hastily written email from Mr. Kraus at 526, literally four minutes before the board meeting starts, which I'm sure everyone knew was going to be full based on the amount of emails received, with some lame excuse about us not receiving an email earlier today saying the financial system had some glitches. What glitches? No explanation. Not that an explanation at this point even matters. A small sorry for any inconvenience, like we are just a customer looking for something that is out of stock. You knew about these glitches long ago. Why did you choose to not inform us as soon as you knew there would be a delay? How little respect you have for hundreds of teachers' lives you have affected once again, and during our time of recuperation and regeneration for the next school year. You guys literally make us fight tooth and nail all year just to receive a portion, just a portion of the COLA that is given to you by the state. We have to fight for every cent. Then you tell us how much you appreciate teachers. We couldn't do it without you. Yet behind closed doors, you prove time and time again that you don't appreciate us. We mean nothing to you, our schools, or our kids. It is time to put your money where your mouth is and fix this now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam President. We have one more speaker, Ms. Kimberly Smith. Mr. Sinatra, is Ms. Smith in the Zoom room? Yes, they are. Asking them to unmute now. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President, board members, executive board members, esteemed colleagues and guests. Oh, agreement. A negotiated and typically legally binding arrangement between parties as to a course of action also meaning the absence of incompatibility between two things, consistency. I feel as if I've just spoken about consistency and now here I am speaking about a similar word, agreement. Jen Rader, our ADTA president, as well as two other union members have already outlined to the board the immediate issue that stands before us. Well, actually the one that stands before the teachers. We had an agreement with the district that we would be paid our stipends on July 1st. This agreement occurred a few months ago with plenty of time to work out the glitches in the financial system. Once again, teachers are given the short end of the stick and expected to just accept apologies and be content with the fact that fiscal services is actively working on completing a July 15th payroll where both of these should be paid out. I don't like the word should be paid out, not will be. How is it that this was an agreement that we were notified of on May 12th, 2022 at 9.02 AM and was somehow unable to be fulfilled in almost two months time? We are expected to get things done immediately with accuracy, with a sense of urgency in order to meet the needs of our students. When will there be a sense of urgency to give us the respect that we have earned, that we deserve? When will we get to stop groveling at the feet of the district to get out just our just dues. I tell you, that day is coming because I, like many of my fellow teachers, are rather tired of catching the pennies that have been tossed our way. In the meantime, how about the district honor their agreement and cut us the checks that we were promised and that we have already done the work for without payment? Thank you for your time and hopefully for your consideration in this matter. Have a good night. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Madam President, that completes all of the public comments this evening. Thank all you. right, thank you. Let's go Go ahead and go on to cab, cabinet re, re, reports 9.001, e events and future active activities significant to the di district. Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, members of the board, members of the community. I am excited to share a few comments uh, related to district activities. As you heard earlier, I was pleasantly uh, pleased to hear from several of our staff members that summer session has been going well. It's always exciting. I've had the opportunity to go out there and visit the sites, and I'll be doing that again. Our last day is this Friday, and so I will be out there, and I know a cabinet as well. Uh, we'll go out there and visit the sites as the last day for summer session and wish our staff and our students off for the rest of the summer. 
So we're excited about that. And this evening you uh, have a new item there, cabinet report. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Moran and then Dr. Dwizen to just share a few quick uh, updates related to the work that they're doing in their department. So Mr. Oh, okay, on Zoom, uh, Dr. Dwizen, if, uh, if you can unmute and uh, share some great things going on in academic services, that would be great. You're on mute. Oh, she can't unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Good evening, um, Board of Trustees. So, um, academic services right now is um, busily closing out the end of the school year. So you'll see several um, items on the agenda tonight in, in pointing to that direction. So this is the time of the year where we're heavily into next year and planning all that um, happens and goes through. Um, our team is very excited on August 1st, we're going to have a family summit in which um, families are able to come in. We're gonna have a guest speaker and also have different resources, community agencies all coming together to have a, a welcome back for our students and our children in the community. So we are really excited about that. And then we are also busy planning and preparing for our August um, 3rd Welcome Back for Teachers. And so we're excited to present more of those details in the coming by the, by for sure by the next board meeting so that we are ready to uh, roll out and launch our new school year. Um, and those are the two major updates that we have for academic services at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dwizen. And now I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Moran for a few quick updates on activities and human resources. All right, thank you, Mr. Krause. Uh, good evening, everybody. So uh, in regards to HR, so I'd like to report that um, we've hired six new certificated staff uh, members. Um, we also, uh, with our HR staff, we have a, we're planning a two-day new hire orientation for certificated staff in collaboration with ADTA. Um, recently, uh, several of our managers in, in HR attended an HR boot camp uh, through AXA um, that covers a variety of things, hiring contracts and a variety of things. It was, it was great to know that um, the presenter, uh, a former assistant sub of HR from Castro Valley uh, is the presenter. Uh, uh, I, I did my personnel academy with her when I was up in the Bay Area. And so uh, uh, our staff in HR, Dana and, and Alejandra, uh, shared that with me recently. And so uh, I know Sherry personally. She was our presenter. So it's great that they're getting that training uh, from her. Uh, we also, for the uh, summer, uh, we're, we're having HR trainings for classified and certificated staff. Um, we do have a calendar uh, for that uh, at the end of July and the first week in, in August. And uh, that's, uh, that's the update with our, our HR report. Thank you. Thank you, members of the board, for the opportunity to share out some of the great things that are going on in our district. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, now it's time for 10 gov governing board mem members re reports and announcements. Um, who would like to go first? Or do I want me to just pick somebody? Uh, Trustee La Love French? Thank you. I was trying to unmute myself. So I don't want to um, reiterate the same thing over and over again. However, I do want to say that I do sincerely apologize on the glitch that took place today regarding the stipends and the retro pay. Um, I do truly understand, you know, what it's like to expect something and then because of technical difficulties, um, it doesn't take place. And I know that the district right now is working diligently on trying to make sure everyone gets paid as soon as possible, but I do sincerely apologize. I also wanted to say that I am so excited regarding the summer program was very successful and I am looking forward to um, a new school year. I have confidence in our um, cabinet that we will start off our school new school year um, strong and um, ready to support um, our staffing, um, our children and the communities that we serve. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. 
uh, Trustee Web Webster. Um, yes, yeah, so good afternoon or good evening. Let's see where I'm at today. Um, I want to start tonight's comments off with a um, quick comment to an email I got this week. I got an email from a teacher within our district highlighting how great her students did on the test. And um, far too often, I feel like I get to hear a little bit more of the bad than I do the good. So I do wanna take a few minutes tonight and I wanna tell all of our students how amazing they did last year, um, to see those results, to see that teacher scores, and just to see how hard those kids worked on those tests. Um, once again, they did so great, and I can't wait for next um, school year. Along with summer session, I hear that we had some amazing um, field trips that they went on. They saw awesome things. They had amazing fun, and I cannot wait to see some pictures, I hope. Wink, wink. Um, and then I just want to take a, my last moment and make a comment that I got to walk around this amazing DO last Friday. I got to meet a lot of our staff from IT to um, transportation to operations. Um, and I got to learn some amazing facts about what just all goes behind, like goes on behind scenes. So um, I'm really blessed to get that opportunity to have like more of an inside look at it. And I look forward to hearing more. So thank you. And I appreciate everybody being here tonight. Okay, uh, tr Trustee Tur Turner. I would just like to say, um, Thank you for um, the great attendance. Generally, uh, when school is out, we don't have many uh, participants tuning in to our meetings. And I would just like to say thank you for um, showing up and you know, um, hearing what we have to say and what's going on. It's disappointing to hear about the stipends. Um, I know you've waited a whole year doing negotiations in order to receive the money that's due you. So as we sit here hearing, you know, your concerns, we're feeling the same way as well. And, you know, we've instructed, you know, cabinet to look into this process and try to get those, see what we can do to get these checks out to you because they're, you deserve them. And it's disappointing in summer that you, you're waiting on this money and you can't take the necessary trips or do the necessary things that you anticipate doing. And even though two weeks may not seem like a lot of time, it is a lot of time. You know, I, 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 I could test to that. So I'm so sorry. And I know that Mr. Krause will work diligently and seek every remedy possible to get these checks out to you because you deserve them. Um, Again, to reiterate what my other trustees mentioned, summer school, I'm so happy. This is the first time in a long time that I've heard summer school was a success. And the students sent board members pictures of their art. That, when I saw that on my, on my desk, I, it just warmed my heart to see them having fun in summer school. We don't hear that often fun in school and amazing field trips and the amazing uh, stuff that they're doing every day. So thank you, teachers. Thank you, principals. Thank you, administration, for making that happen and making it run smoothly for our kids. Um, I got that same email that Trustee Webster got. And, you know, we always hear uh, 1728 and that we're the last in the, in the county or even the state for that matter. And I know that good things are happening in our schools, even with COVID. And some schools are doing better than others. And I want to acknowledge and, and, and congratulate the teachers that their class are excelling. And this particular teacher, I don't have a name in front of me. Um, and I know there's many, 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 many more that are doing a tremendous job. And with COVID back on the rise, hopefully they can get it under control this summer. 
you know, and me, I, myself, I, I had a bout with it um, and I'm doing better. Um, but I just want to say that despite the checks and despite the stipends, I wish you an amazing rest of your summer. And trust me, we're going to do everything that we can to get those checks to you as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there isn't much more that I can add to that. Um, I just know that Miss Mr. Krause tries really hard to do a good job. You know, he's real, really earn, earn, earnest in what, what he does. And I know that he will work hard. You know, he's, he really does have a good, good heart at it, at his job. And he's going to do what, what he can to, to rect, rectify what, what has ha happened. So, and I'm not going to go, go on because we got to go. So thank you. And just thank you for creating the good mem memories for the kids. That's the thing. Okay, let's go on to 11, uh, adopt, adoption of the min minutes. 11.01, um, 11 board min minutes, approve as writ written and ordered filled, reg regular board meet meeting of June 4th, 14th, 2022. Can I get a mo motion to approve? Trustee Turner, I motion that we approve the board minutes of June 14th, 2022. Mm -hmm. Webster, I second. Oh, My pen is bleeding through and making a mess of my thing. Okay, can I get a vote, vote please? Trustee Webster. Webster. Webster, aye. Trustee Turner. Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Motion, motion pass, passes for zero, zero. Okay, go going on to 12, um, 12 staff re reports and presentations. 12.01, ac academic service services local local con control and account accountability plan annual uh, update overview presentation yes thank you madam president at this time i'd like to turn over to dr uh, dwizen and she will be presenting uh, on this agenda item thank you so much let me share my screen Okay, are we able to see that all right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so good afternoon, President, or good evening, President Bench, Board of Trustees, Cabinet, Staff, and Community. This evening, I will give an annual update on the Local Control Accountability Plan, otherwise known as LCAP. This is required to be presented and approved alongside the budget yearly. Our objective this evening is to provide an overview of the annual update to the LCAP provide an update on implementation of the 2021 to 2024 LCAP, remember it's a three-year plan, and then also to provide next steps based on community feedback. The Local Control and Accountability Plan is a three-year district plan that describes the goals, activities, services, and expenses to support positive student um, progress um, outcomes in alignment with state and local priorities. So this is actually the end of our first year of this LCAP plan that was put in place um, a year ago. The LCAP provides an opportunity for districts to share the stories of the how, why they select programs and the different services that are needed to meet local needs. The funds detailed in the LCAP are specifically intended to support improving outcomes for students who are English learners, our foster youth and our low income students. So this slide speaks to our 22-23 LCAP process for the year. So uh, currently we're at the end of our year one of our three-year LCAP plan, which is from 2021 to 2024. The requirement is to be done, that this update is to be done yearly. So um, it speaks to the progress to the goals and additions can be made um, at that time every year. Um, impacts of COVID, 
Um, data is from 2019 and this year's data for the first time in a few years, we're gonna have data coming in um, for our next year's annual up LCAP update to be added to um, our LCAP plan. Um, remember the reason why 2021 was the first year of the um, LCAP plan was because the year prior to that, while we were in COVID, the state suspended LCAP and they put in place what was called the learning continuity plan. And so that really was specifically to address the needs for our students during COVID. And so when school, once schools returned it, in 2021, that's when the LCAP plan that we currently have was put in place. So um, the opening of schools, the mask mandates on March 11th, all of those were limitations to our um, implementation as it came to um, our LCAP plan. So the district has, um, when this was put in place, um, uh, for the LCAP goals, there were three main goals, student achievement, student supports, parent and family community engagement. So those are the three objectives that were outlined. Um, and this was written prior to my arrival, but this was um, based on the, the feedback from the staff, the students, the community. These are the three goals that are outlined in our AESD LCAP plan. So sites were also allocated dollars to support LCAP goals and activities. So what we wanted to see was an alignment between their school plans and the LCAP so that we are all working toward one common goal. So um, in the development of LCAP for the, um, we've gathered feedback from parents, staff, students, and community members through meetings. Um, and it was noted that um, out of these survey responses and Padlet, there were several emerging themes that kept coming up and kept recurring. Um, this was tutoring, this was social emotional learning, counselors and therapists, uh, bully prevention, extracurricular activities, so things like clubs and sports, um, and then a need for parent engagement classes, so even uh, learning languages, how to help students at home. These were the emerging trends um, from the feedback received. So updates to the 22-23 plan. So this particular plan that we have in front of you, um, we some of the updates, so it looks, even though it's this, the bulk of it is the same plan for the three years, um, some of the things that were ab added and have to be updated every year. So background information was updated. There's a comprehensive support um, and improvement section was updated to uh, reflect the support to the CSI schools engaging community uh, educational partners section was updated, summary of our educational partner feedback, um, our ed early education social workers, those specifically were items that were added in. You'll hear a little bit more about early education later this evening. Um, goal analysis sections were updated to include challenges and successes for this year, and then budgeting information added and always updated to reflect current al amounts aligned to our budgets. So goal number one was student achievement. Um, student achievement will increase in English language arts, math, science, social studies, history, focus on a clo um, closing the achievement back. So definitely uh, instructional technology, elective coursework, professional learning libraries, all of these items listed before you, and particularly the new one added this year to the LCAP based on feedback was early childhood materials. And that was new for 22-23. Um, and this is based on feedback and particularly our stakeholders, our TK um, and kinder teachers as well. Goal number two is student support. So we provide every student with specific academic behavioral, social, emotional, and mental and physical health supports to meet their individual needs, especially our English learners, students with disabilities, foster youth, homeless, African-American, and other student groups um, whose outcomes are the greatest need. And so um, what's new this year added to or updated in the plan was the social workers. Um, and so that came about through stakeholder input and feedback. Um, and then goal three was our parent, family, and community engagement. So parents, families, community stakeholders will be informed, engaged, and empowered as partners 
with the Adelanto Elementary School District to support student learning and improve student outcomes. So again, um, just making sure that we keep up with those things that are going to actively engage our parents. So you see that um, I just mentioned our Parent Academy and Resource Fair that we're having on August 1st. Um, we're real excited about our Parent Square communication tool that's going into effect, should go live for this coming school year. That will also allow us to send text messaging um, and items directly to the phones of parents to increase our, parent, our community engagement. Um, and advisory committees, supplemental materials, those are items that would fall under this goal. So here is the timeline um, that took place. This was um, initially when the plan was being developed from last year. So um, all of those items were taken into account and that's when the plan was written. This year is our stakeholder meetings um, and development timeline and according to where we came to today with our updates and you'll see that um, it would began earlier this year, I think when I was very first arriving um, in September with that LCAP revision presentation. And then monthly, it's important to note that our sites engage parents and staff to determine needs. So they do that through uh, school site council, PTO, coffee with the principal, staff meetings, and then uh, cabinet union, union leadership meetings as well, as well provide that continuous um, feedback all through the year. And then you have the additional meetings that are listed there below. So for next year, we heard loud and clear um, the need to make sure that we are continuously being strategic and making sure that we're specifically uh, focused on the topic of LCAP. And what that also includes is making sure that um, monthly that we're providing a, a strategic opportunity for our stakeholders to provide um, feedback directly on that topic. So beginning in October, what we wanna do is take a data deep dive. Where are our students at based on this year will be the first year that we'll have um, test data in a while. So looking at that, what is, what is that data telling us? Where do we wanna go? And then um, you'll see each month a different kind of topic is mentioned. And then that way we're all through the year making sure that we are getting the feedback that we need. Also, um, we want to make sure to branch out and maybe hold these uh, stakeholder meetings at various school sites so that we're reaching uh, different areas of the community, um, not just always at the district office. We recognize that it may be hard for some of our families um, to get all the way over to the district office. So we wanna make sure to provide those strategic opportunities across town to be able to gain additional input and feedback. And this schedule is in addition to what we already have going, coffee with the principals, school site council, staff meetings, in which input will be gathered. And then what we also realize is that um, not all parents may have access to technology um, or social media. So in addition to email and text, we also got a good response back when we sent out the paper surveys, even though we had the electronic one up. So we wanna make sure that we are sending out paper surveys um, at least twice a year so that our parents have the opportunity to state their voice as they need to. So next steps, it will be to continue implementation of the LCAP, begin engaging the community in a monthly stakeholder meeting, provide opportunities for the community to engage in the decision-making in a variety of ways, hold LCAP meeting in places other than the district office, so doing regional, and then keeping the community informed about opportunities to participate uh, throughout the year. Thank you very much. Uh, board. Oh. board, do you have que questions? Um, <clears throat> I have a, well, I have a comment and a suggestion. Um, I was talking to trustee, uh, President Benz a while about our LCAP meetings and she had a good suggestion about holding LCAP meetings in trustee areas. So um, in order for families to be accessible to those meetings um, and if they can't make a meeting in that, that particular area, you know, they can always attend another meeting. And my suggestion is, um, to have them at the beginning of the school year. So we can really, really, truly get the community and um, input 
on LCAP because that is what is required. That is a requirement in order for to receive our local funding uh, from the state. Um, I would like it to be visual. I would like parents to be notified on a regular basis regarding the LCAP so they can get familiar with what we want to accomplish and get their input because that's really important, especially um, if we want to increase academic success for our children, we need to get our parents involved and more community activities for our parents to get involved. We need to welcome them into our schools and into our districts and make them comfortable coming to a meeting and asking questions. A lot of parents don't ask questions because they don't know what LCFF mean or LCAP mean and what those and how they fit into that into the, to the development of this program. And I have to tell you, you are essential to this. And this is one of the reasons why after almost 42 years, the state changed the way that the districts received funding. Everything was restricted. Everyone received the same dollars. And when LCAP and LCFF, LCFF is local control funding formula, local control. That means that Funds are given to districts according to their needs. And in Adelanto, we get, get a level of funding. We get everyone in the state of California get a basic grant, and we get that. Then there's a supplemental grant. Some districts get that. And then there's a concentration grant. And some districts get that. Adelanto get all three. And with that, we have to include our community. We have to know what the needs are in our particular district. Think about your own home and you set a budget for your house. Now your neighbor's budget may be different than your budget. And that's how we set our budget based on our LCAP. And we have to identify the needs of our students and our community. So we need your input. And if we start early enough, then we can successfully, you know, prepare a plan that fit our district. And thank you, Dr. DeWizon, you know, for, you know, there, I'm looking for some of your slides. I see you changed some of your slides, which is good, you know, and, and I'm looking forward to next year um, to include our parents and, you know, go out and show them what the LCAP look like. And it's a plan. The LCAP is a plan. It's different from our budget. Both our budget and our LCAP will be approved tonight. And um, we would like you to be involved in that. So thank you, uh, Dr. DeWizon and your team for creating this plan and moving forward to next year. I know it'll be even better. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Turner. I've made those notes. Okay, uh, tr trustees, any questions? <laughs> Um, no questions, just a quick comment. I do want to reiterate what Trustee Turner said and take a minute to say thank you, uh, Tasha, for your hard work and um, preparing this for us. And that's all. Thank you. Uh, tr Trustee Lat La French. I have no comments. Thank you, Dr. Delizan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the only thing I ask is, can, can you e e email me the, the slide you showed? Cause the one that I have printed is missing some, some slide. And I would like that in, in for formation. I will make that available to all the trustees. Yes. And I will. All speak. right. All right. Thank, thank you, doc. Dr. Dwight Doizan. Okay. So now let, let's go on to 12.02 ac academic. Academic serve services and annual information on progress towards meet, meeting lo local in indicate caters. Okay. Yes, thank, thank you, Madam President, members of the board and community. Again, I would like to turn this presentation over to Dr. Dwizen as well for a repeat. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Kraus. Let me go ahead and make sure I'm sharing the right one. So this is just an update for our annual um, um, local indicator. So this is needs to be reported annually. Um, and it gives an overview of the background significance and monitoring of our local indicators. Um, this is taken to the 
board yearly as an update alongside the LCAP. So the State Board of Education approved standards for the local indicators that support local education agencies in measuring and reporting their progress within the appropriate priority area. The local indicators reflect the emphasis on local control um, and measure priorities that are oriented more to implementation measurement rather than that summative outcome. And it allows the local community to understand the holistic picture of our LEA's progress, so our district's progress. For each applicable local indicator, LEA's assign one of the three performance levels. So it could be met, not met, or not met for two or more years. So the indicators are related to the student dashboard and we must report those annually. The dashboard is tied to the state assessments and the California accountability system. Um, and the LEA is required to annually measure the progress, report the results to the local school board at a regularly scheduled meeting annually and report the results of the public through the dashboard. So what you have right now, it shows the indicators by priority areas. You will see that there are 10 indicators all together. However, one, two, three, six, and seven are the local indicators. So those are um, a little bit different. And we are able to make these reports through surveys, documentation of the ways in which we're meeting those areas, for example. And you will also note that priority four, five, six, and eight are tied to quantitative measures for our local indicators um, are qualitative in nature. So the next slides are to inform the board and the public that um, Adelanto Elementary School District has met um, all of those priorities. So priority one is basic conditions at school. Um, we met that, so meeting our Williams requirements 100%, and you see those reports come to our board meetings um, quarterly. And so we do um, make sure that we meet for the basic conditions um, at our school team. So we wanna thank our um, custodial facilities maintenance uh, staff for helping us with that. Um, priority two is implementation of our state academic standards. We met that goal as well. That's making sure that we're implementing the state standards and reports the results to the local governing board at a regularly scheduled board meeting um, and to the stakeholders through the evaluation rubrics. Priority three is our parent engagement that has been met, which is seeking in input from parents in decision making and promoting parental per participation in programs. Priority six has been met. LEA administers a local climate survey at least every other year. Um, we plan on doing that yearly, so we have a good idea of how we are growing in this area to meet the needs of our students. Priority seven is access to a broad course of study. Additionally, we have met that one as well. So the extent to which students have access to and are enrolled into a broad course of study, that includes the adopted courses of study specified in the California Education Code for grades one through six and grades seven through 12 or seven through six through eight in our case, um, as applicable, including programs and services developed and provided to unduplicated students and individuals with exceptional needs. And so that concludes our local indicators presentation. Okay, uh, board, do you have any questions? Trustee Level of French. No, I have no questions. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Doc, Dr. Dwy Dwyzon. Thank you. Okay. And going on to 12.03, academic ser services, un universal pre-kindergarten -kin planning and imp implementation grant plan presentation. Yes, thank you, Madam President, members of the board and the community. And once again, what a champion Dr. Dweisen will be presenting <laughs> on the Universal Pre-Kindergarten and Planning. So Dr. Dweisen, I turn it back over to you. Thank you, it is, it is my night this evening. Um, we have to make sure these get through. So thank you for your patience. So let me um, share my screen one more time. 
I'm excited to share this one with you. This is our uh, UPK or Universal Pre-Kindergarten Planning and Implementation Grant. Um, this uh, presentation serves as an overview um, and this is this plan, it's important to note that this plan is in collaboration with our county peers. Um, so we must make sure that it's presented to the board on or before June 30th, just as an overview. And we actually have until June 30th, 2025 to use these grant funds. So the objectives are to provide an overview of the UPK, I keep calling it UPK, that's what it's turned to, but the Universal Pre-Kindergarten Planning Grant Program, and to provide information on the UPK timeline and to share AESD's plan for utilizing these grant funds. So I like this visual, this really just describes um, what UPK is, and basically it's an expansion of the state's current mixed delivery system that meets the early learning and the care needs for three and four year old children and their families. It includes all existing state and federal early learning, private childcare and extended learning programs. So basically it's making sure our kids taken care of from an early age, but also throughout the school day. So you'll see some familiar uh, topics there, expanded learning opportunities grant, which we you know, approved earlier, our ACEs, our after school program, um, and then our 21st century um, community learning centers. That's a newer one um, that, but you will see through this graphic, all the different um, agencies, how they're working together to make that UPK umbrella. So uh, the purpose of why does it matter for this UPK grant and the purpose of our TK extension <laughs> is we know that 90% of brain growth happens before kindergarten. And I'm not gonna re read all of these, but also that the children's learning, um, what's really important at this age is that it's their learning is developmental. So it's really best promoted through strengths-based, play-based approach to joyful, engaging learning that supports their emotional, social, cognitive, and language development. And really, when you look at this picture and the way I love this graphic specifically because it talks about the whole child. And when we're talking about um, educating our students, we should be looking at it from a whole child perspective. So the implementation, implementation timeline. So for this year, it was all about planning. Um, and basically for any child who turns five, September to December is eligible for TK. That's been in place for some time. Um, but what it is, is making sure that there are plans for a full day UPK um, by June 30th, 2022. I'd like to recognize um, Adelanto because for uh, several years, full day transitional kinder was offered, is offered, continues to be offered in our district. Um, which is really great for our students and their early learning developmental needs. Um, from 2022 to 2025, districts are required to expand TK to serve two months more of birthdays each year. So you're gonna keep going a few years um, until we reach full implementation at the bottom there by 25, 26. Um, so right now the TK average size is 24, but what's different about UPK plan is making sure that there is a true adult to child ratio. So next year there's a one to 12 ratio. And then the year after that, it's a one to 10 ratio. Um, and that's a requirement um, by the state. So the, by 25, 26, which is the first full year of implementation, Districts are required to make TK available to all children who will have their fourth birthday by September 1st of the 25-26 school year. So this is huge um, for our families, for our community, um, and making sure that our students are getting those essential times to uh, learn how to write their name, how to cut with scissors, different types of things that are essential to how they learn and how they grow. So um, that's by 25, 26. So within the plan, there are five sections. There's vision and coherence, community engagement and partnerships, workforce recruitment, professional learning, curriculum instruction and assessment, 
and then facilities, services, and operations. We're currently working with business services um, with Mr. Krause, so we want to thank him and his team for helping us as we apply for grants to work on the facilities portion of the implementation of this plan. On May 19th, uh, we met with our, our transitional kindergarten teachers and several principals that currently have TK on their campuses. So what we did was we held a discussion as to what are their needs? Where do they see as areas in which we could learn and improve and build? Um, these were some of the questions that we, we asked, how do we build on our TK program? What professional learning do you need to successfully implement TK? What do you need to help support social emotional learning and executive functioning skills in the TK classroom? What should discipline look like? So um, any questions for consideration? And so all of those, we were able to gather quite a bit of input from our team to help us in our next steps and moving forward. So the following themes emerged out of those conversations. So uh, teachers express and administrators, that group um, expressed a, the need for training for the teachers. And also with that ratio change, they'll need to have um, uh, you know, an aide or an assistant in the classroom. So training for them as well. How do you work with um, four-year-olds is much different than what you would do with a 70 middle school student. Um, provide time for teachers to collaborate, um, collaborate, integrate character education into the TK curriculum. Um, behavior standards should be different for TK, but it's still encompassing. They are still a part of our plan to making sure PBIS is implemented. It would just be more age appropriate for them. Um, provide materials for the program that includes software, maybe update some furniture, supplies, um, going to a center-based model in which students can, you know, if, you, if you've been in a class with four-year-olds, they don't always sit so still for a long time. So um, having a center-based um, where they're able to kind of rotate through these different stations um, actually um, has been research-based and shown to proven to um, really help them in the long term. Provide any alternative uh, seating interactions, interactive boards. Um, they want to, and we we specifically made a promise to this group that we would continue to meet regularly with them, um, so that we're specifically addressing the needs of early childhood, which is a very different thing than um, some of our elementary, middle school needs. And we do want to make sure that we're expanding TK to offer to all of our elementary schools so that every elementary school has a TK on there. So um, currently it's offered at five of our elementary schools next year, it will be six. And so we plan to um, keep going from there. So the next steps are to work across departments to continue preparing for our UPK implementation and implementing UPK plan with Fidelity in conjunction with our county partners. Thank you. Trustees, do we have in, any quick questions? I'll just make a quick comment, I promise. I do wanna say thank you again, Tasha. Um, it was my understanding you weren't feeling good tonight. So I do wanna say thank you very, very much for taking the time presenting and pushing through it. I do appreciate you, darling. And I hope you feel better soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, La French Tur Turner. Again, thank you for that report. Um, I'm looking forward to um, uh, UTK in the implementation. Thank you. Trustee Lala French, this, this is your, your expertise. No, it's so hard. <laughs> it's, it's so heartwarming to me because yes, this is my passion for the last 20 plus years. Um, however, I will save my questions for Dr. Zweiza 101, but I do appreciate um, the opening of everyone understanding just how much a TK and three and four year olds are how important it is on the education for them before they enter into um, the elementary schools and how much they should be supported and 
I'm glad to see, even though I said one new school for this next coming school year, I wish it could have been more than one. So I'll ask more about that at a different time. Um, however, I'm just glad that everyone um, um, is out there supporting early childhood and how important it is for children to have that early start before they enter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And all I have to say is just think, thinking about those little ones in the classroom all day, I'm all red, ready, tired, tired. Like I'm exhausted just think, thinking about it. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with, with the fifth, fifth grade gr graders. That, that's my, my thing. But, you know, T, 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 K, T, T, teachers, they are, they are aimed angels you know my kids been benefited greatly from ttk i i feel be because of that their their ed ed education went smoother I, I i guess they they didn't struggle so i'm i've al always been a pro proponent for for that that grade so thank 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 you doc Dr. Dwizon. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and go on Re real quick. Be be before we move on to third thirteen, the consent agenda. It is nine third thirteen. We are supposed to be done by nine thirty. There's no way we can get this done by that time. I need somebody to make a motion to extend our me meeting. I think we, we should just, again, like last time, do 10 third, third 30. Hopefully it doesn't last, but this way we can have enough time to get get done. Do you want at least 11 just to make sure we're good? Hmm? Make Do 11 just to make sure we're good? Like I said, we don't have to finish it. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's, that's fine. Webster motions to extend to 11 p.m. Trustee Turner, second. I don't want to say that. I know. And okay, can you take to take, take a vote, vote, please? Trustee Webster, aye. Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench, LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz, and Benz, aye. Motion, motion pa passes for zero, zero, zero. Okay, so let let's go go home. Go on to the consent agenda. We will be take, taking items 13.02 through 13.50. Does any trustee want to pull an item? Um, trustee Turner, I would like to pull 13.50. Okay. I would like to pull 13.50. Forty-three, thirteen point forty-three. Okay. Um, anything else, Tr Trustee La La French? No, the item I wanted to pull is already been pulled. Okay, and I have none. So, okay, so. Let me try to read this correctly. So, um, taking I um, all I items except uh, thir 13.43, 13.50. Can, can I get a mo motion? Webster motions. And can I get a sec second? Let's do turn a second. Can I get a vote, please? Yes, Trustee Webster. Aye. Oh, I'm on my page here. Trustee Turner. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Motion passes for zero. zero. Okay, go going on to four, 14. Um, I items removed from the consent agenda. We will start at thir 13.443. Uh, Webster, I believe you pulled that. Can can I get a mo motion to approve? Oh, yeah. Uh, Webster motions to approve. Okay. And can I get a sec second? Trustee Turner, I second. 
turn on a second. Okay, um, we're all op open for discuss discussion. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we want to talk about it. Do we vote on it? Then, then you say the thing. So we we have to vote on it, and then they'll do their thing. Oh, so no. we can't make comments no. after. Do we vote? want to make comments? No, we'd like him to make the comments first. Put the names in. We must be in there. So, so we're we're assuming. Oh, let's let's. Yeah. If, if we vote, then it's all. Yeah. So we 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 can vote and still dis discuss it, right? Or just make closing comment on it at least. I think we can. Yeah. Um, if you take action, we know the name, so you can say the name, and then I'll share out once there's a vote. Okay. So let let's vote. Okay. I agree. Let's vote first. Okay. Please vote. Okay. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench. Aye. Trustee Benz. Benz. Aye. Mo motion pa passes for zero. Zero. Now we're going to get the info. Yes. Okay. A little change in protocol. So thank you for your patience, everybody. So uh, applicant uh, 62822-1 is Vanessa Friedman. So uh, Vanessa Friedman uh, was recommended and now approved uh, as coordinator of curriculum and instruction. Uh, so congratulations to Ms. Friedman. She has worked in the district for the past two years as an assistant administrator at Westside Park. She's been instrumental in supporting teachers and providing instructional leadership there. She's also coordinated local and state assessments since they've returned this year, as well as IEPs and student success teams. Uh, previously, she was a classroom teacher for 16 years in Orange County and was a, a previous assistant principal. So congratulations to Vanessa. I believe she's still on Zoom here. So again, if we could give her a round of applause. So uh, applicant 62822-2 is actually uh, Mr. Jonathan Wilson. He happens to be here in the audience. So congratulations to Mr. Jonathan Wilson. He, is the, he will be the principal of Eagle Ranch Elementary, effective July 1st, 2022. Uh, Jonathan has worked his entire educational career here in the district. He, he served as assistant administrator at Morgan Kincaid for the past five years. He was instrumental in coordinating MTSS groups, serving as the site PBS coordinator, providing instructional support to ensure students received a rigorous instructional program. Prior to his administrative position, uh, Jonathan was a teacher for nine years at Morgan Kincaid, Westside Park, Eagle Ranch, and Mesa Linda. On occasions, he actually supported uh, his administrative colleagues by serving as a principal for the day at El Mirage this past year. So congratulations to uh, Mr. Jonathan Wilson. And thank you for being here, uh, Mr. Wilson. That's okay. it. Thank you. Uh, tr trustees, com comments? Who wants to start? I would just like to say congratulations to both um, the new coordinator of curriculum and instruction and the new principal at Eagle Ranch. I'm sure that both of you will do an extraordinary job um, working in our uh, curriculum department and also at our school site. So congratulations. Thank you. Tr Trustee La French. Okay, so I don't want to take up too much time and repeat everything I said. Um, so I just want to congratulate um, both of you, Vanessa and Jonathan. Um, Jonathan, I'm so excited for you. I truly am. And I appreciate, you know, all of the things that you have done for our district. And um, I know that you're going to do wonderful things over at um, Eagle Ranch. And I'm excited for you. I truly am. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Web Webster. Um, so I will keep it brief, but I do want to say congratulations to both applicants um, and congratulations on your new adventures. This has got to be super exciting. Um, and I have so much faith in you. I know you guys are going to knock it out of the park. So I look forward to it and thank you. Congratulations again. Okay. And all I 
I will say is I am expect expecting great greatness. Nothing, nothing less. Okay. No. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's go on to FIV 15 new bid business. Uh, FIV 15. Oh, we do have the other one. Sorry, I'm sorry. I got so excited. Okay, here we go. Uh, third, 1350, uh, class and classified pers personnel. Uh, Trustee Turner, I believe you did pull this. Can I get a mo motion for um, amendment? Okay. Or or because you want to want we uh, want this yes. amended. Okay. okay. We're gonna do a mo motion for amendment. Um the reason I pulled this is wait, it, wait, we, we gotta get okay, a second motion. I second sec we, we get a we well you motioned. I need, need a sec second. Okay. Webster second. Webster. Okay, now we're open for discussion discussion. The reason I pulled this, there's a uh, in the past the district has always given a stipend for our extra duty assignment. Um, and I think that that um, stipend was 5% of their current salary. Um, so I had, a you know, we had a discussion with um, Mr. Krause regarding this. And I think that the district must remain consistent in how we, um, supplement our current employees when they're doing extra duties in another department. And I think that if we uh, approve this, then it'll cause some major problems with other employees that, that are stepping outside their line of work to help another department when they're lacking or when someone find another job or if someone is out sick. So I just want to stay consistent with what we're doing. and. Uh, we, in the past, we've given 5% incentive uh, on their current pay. And um, so that's why I pulled this item for the board to consider that and look at what we've been doing in the past. Okay. Uh, trustees and any other com comments? Okay. With the motion uh -huh. on right now, does that change this agenda item to five percent? Yes, yes, we're we're um amend mending it to the five percent stipend. Yes, so she still is going to get some form of compensation for extra yes. days. Yes, okay, that was my only question. Shoot. Okay, uh, Trustee La La French. No, I have no comment. Okay. Um, and, and I have none. So let's call for the vote. Just to be clear, trustees, I have a motion by Trustee Turner, second by Trustee Webster to amend uh, to 5% pay for this item, correct? Yes. Okay. Trustee Webster? Aye. Trustee Turner? <laughs> Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz? Uh, ben Sai motion passes for zero, zero. Okay, so that is the consent agenda. Let's go on to 15 new biz business. Uh, 15.001 approved board res resolution 21.22.35, making five findings as re. Required by A A B three six six one to permit the board of trustees meet meeting to continue to be conducted by tel teleconference while while the COVID COVID nineteen emerge emergency remains in place. So we're going to do a motion to approve. I motion to approve. I need a sec second. I second. Okay, we're open for discussion. Discussion. Um, I think that like today, you know, I I really needed. I was gonna call out today. <clears throat> um, but if I had called out and teleconference, then we would not have had a quorum here, and we would not have been able to meet today. 
I think by approving this, we're not approving to go into Zoom, but in the event that we don't have three people sitting at the dais, we can still have a meeting and conduct the business of the district. And I think that's important for us to do. COVID cases are arising and um, you know we still need to be able to do our business. And um, if we're okay to be here, we can be here, but if not, then we don't want to jeopardize not being able to be here. And there's a lot of things that needed to be approved upon tonight um, because June, 30th is just in a few days and July 1st is the start of a new year. So um, I'm just wanna make, do be proactive in making sure that we are, can, can hold meetings during a, the state of emergency. So um, it'll benefit us to approve this item. And, and like I said, we could still meet in public, but just be able to conduct the business of the district. So uh, approving this will not re require us to be strictly Zoom. No. Right? It'll okay. Work. Yes. Okay. I, I always thought it was that we had to do one or the other. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. I believe that is clarification from the attorney and Mr. Krause, he could probably add to that, but you are able to do that. Yes. Okay. Okay, so essentially all it's saying is it's giving us as board members the ability to come via Zoom in the occasion we needed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should this have been already uh, approved from the last one, Trustee Turner, uh, being that she came down with uh, uh, being sick and was not able to, um, she could have called in and we could have had her in Zoom, but because we did not have this approved, she actually needed to be here in okay. person tonight. Okay. All right, then. I'm Works fine with them. Okay, so let's call for a vote. Trustee Webster? Aye. Trustee Turner? Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz? Benz, aye. Mo, mo, motion pa passes for zero. Zero. I'm still showing. But I'm still com coming. That's what I was saying. I'm still coming. Did you got COVID? I still want come. food. No, I'm coming anyway. You I'm can't. Kidding. If you have COVID, you can't come. Well, no, but I still want the food. <laughs> That's a good salad. Okay, here we go. Go going on to fifteen point zero two. Ac academic serve services. Un universal pre -kin -kin kindergarten planning and M implementation grant plan. I need a mo motion to approve. Motion to approve. Okay, I'll give that that one to Love French. And we'll give the sec second to Webster. Okay. Um, do we have the discuss discussion? Call for the vote. Trustee Webster? Aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee Love French. Left French, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Motion passes for zero. zero. Mm -hmm. Go going on to 15.03 approval of the 2022 23 school plans for stu student achievement. Can I get a motion, motion to approve? Webster, I motion. Can I get a sec second? Left French, I second. Okay, we're open for discuss discussion. Just real quick. Um, in the past, um, the board honored each the principals of our schools to present their school site plans, um, but that changed. I was looking over some of the school site plans and, and I see low expectations for our students in some of our schools, not all. Um, I hope that I'm reluctant to approve these, but I do expect them to come back for a supplemental approval on those because when we set the standard, you know, um, for high achievement, then our students do better. But if I'm looking at, and I won't say what school, you know, in math, one one site put one, they expect an increase of 1%. You know, I'm disappointed in that because I think that that is very low expectations for our students. And then I look at other schools and I'm looking at a 10% increase, you know, 
and and that's more acceptable. And I think our students can do it. I, I know that they can do it. And so um, I'll go ahead and approve these. Um, but I, I really would like us to look when we create these school site plans that you have a plan in motion and, and you can work with that plan and expect high achievement for our students because they deserve that. And that's all. Okay. Okay, and any other discussion? Okay, here, hearing none, call for, for the vote. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Mo motion pa passes for zero. zero. Okay, go, going on to 15.04. Um, uh, approval of the adopt adoption of the lo local con control and account accountability plan and annual uh, up update for 2022-23 school year. Can I get a mo motion to approve? My motion to approve. Thank you. Mo motion by La French. I need a sec second. Webster, I second. Okay, we're open for discuss discussion. I, I think I, you know, I, I pretty much um, voiced my concern and um, doing the presentation, so I'm good. I'm okay. okay. Okay, call for the vote, please. Trustee Webster, aye. Trustee Turner, Trustee Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench, LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Mo motion pa passes for zero. zero. Okay, go, going on to 15.05, approval of the proposed 2022-23 budge budget and multi-year project projections for 2023-24 and 2024-25. A motion that we approve. Okay, I'm sorry, I got stuck there. Uh, got a motion motion by Turn Turner. Can can I get get a sec second? Web Webster, I second. Okay, we're open for discuss discussion. Uh, um, Mr. Kraus, could you uh, talk about the proposed uh, budget adjustments here? Yes, thank you for that uh, question. Uh, the governor and the legislature have come to an agreement. We are waiting for it to be signed. And there is some additional funding that is not reflected in this uh, budget before the board this evening. The law allows districts to make a 45 day revision to their budget. And we highly anticipate that we will be bringing that those revisions back to the board to show you what changed from the time that this budget was created until the governor actually signs the state budget. And so uh, we are optimistic that there is additional funding uh, that will be coming uh, to, to every district, including ours in the state. And uh, again, we anticipate either July 12th or the first board meeting in August, bringing that budget revision back to the board and the community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, call for the vote, please. <laughs> Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Turner. Trustee Turner. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench. Aye. Trustee Benz. Benz. Aye. Mo motion passes for zero. <laughs> okay. Go, go home. Going on to 15.06 biz, business serve. Services approval of Bertronics to pr provide main maintenance for Riz Rizograph cop copy ma machines at George Vis Visual Arts, I forget what, and Performing Arts School and e Eagle Ranch School. Can I get a mo motion to approve? Webster, I motion. Okay, can I get a sec sec second? French, I second. Okay, we're open for discuss discussion. Hearing none, call for the vote. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Turner. Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. 
Trustee Bentz. Bentz, aye. Motion passes for zero. All right, go, going on to 15.07, Bid Business Services, approval of the, the architect slash in, engineer RFP dis, district pro, projects. Can I get a mo motion to approve? Turner, a motion to approve. Can I get a sec second? Webster, I second. <laughs> Any discuss discussion? It's not really a discussion, but it is a comment. Okay, go ahead. I was very excited to see this pool project last Friday to see, um, have a little bit of time to speak with our maintenance and operations um, in regards to this pool and kind of get an idea of what they need to support it as well. So after seeing the condition and seeing what really does need to move forward on this, I feel so much more excited to see this final project. So that was my only comment. Okay, uh, my comment, I do have a thing. I've seen, seen online where res, residents were asking if Ad, Ad Lanto had a pool or swimming le lessons for their their kids, and the the may mayor had expressed that he had spoke spoken to the dist district, and the dist district was you know re re repair, repairing it. Um, I'm really excited. This this pool can can bring our com community great things where kids can get swimming let le lessons you know fam families can come and bring you know bring their kids and um i i saw i'm i'm glad that the this is move move moving for forward so by next next year we have a well funct functioning pool for for our kids and for our com commune communities so okay can we call yeah. oh, I'm sorry I, I, I would like to say something um you know every year even well not last year but the year prior to that every year we talk about getting this pool repaired and fixed and talk about it only need a pump and then the pump we can't get the parts for the pump and there's a major problems with this pool and the reason I um voted to approve this is because there's not much activity for our children in the summer. And it's hot. And it's going to get even hotter. And I can't wait to see this pool in operation next year. And hopefully it will be in operations next year because again, like Trustee Ben said, our kids need this, our parents need this, our community need this pool. Mm -hmm. And Last two years ago, we were talking about how much we were going to charge, knowing that this pool was not ready to even stick your toe in, you know. So I know it's a lot of work and I know it's costly, but it's very, you know, it, it's a needed necessity in this community. So I'm looking forward to that. Finally, looking forward to that. And if for any reason they say that this pool will not be operational next summer, then I will be very upset. Very upset. We've been talking about this for years now, a lot of years, too many years. Okay. All right. and that's all I have. Well, let let's call call the vote so we 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 can get get to this ball roll rolling. <laughs> Tristy Webster, aye. Tristy Turner, Turner, aye. Tristy LaFrench, LaFrench, aye. Tristy Benz, Benz, aye. Motion passes for zero zero okay go going on to fifth 15.08 business serve services off off authorization to pig piggyback on bids rfps rfqs award awarded by uh, other pub, public aid agencies can can i get a mo motion to to approve webster i motion to approve can I get a sec second? Turner, second. 
Okay, um, we're open for discuss discussion. Uh, Mr. Krause, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry to put put you on the spot, but it just came came to me now. Can you give a brief ov overview on what what this is so the pub public can can know? Absolutely. Thank you, Madam President and board members. So when a district brings a piggyback to the board for approval, the organization in this case, the uh, County of Los Angeles already went out to bid for these services and they received a bid. It was approved by the county. What we can do as a entity is piggyback on their bid and use the same pricing that they get for our district. So because we're smaller in size, it seems like the bigger you are, you get a better price point as, a, as an organization. So the county of LA gets a better price point, and then we're able to peak back on that cost and get it cheaper than if we went out to bid as a small organization. And so anytime you see piggybacks, that's the, uh, the way that it usually works. And it really gives small districts like us a price advantage uh, a lot of the times. And we may not use it or we may use it, but by the board approving it, it does give us that ability if the opportunity arises to do that. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. Okay. Um, tr trustees, question, questions or com comments? Okay. Here, here, hearing none, please call for the vote. Trustee Webster? Aye. Trustee Turner? Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Bentz? Bentz, aye. Mo motion passes for zero go going on to 15.09 approval of the agreement with cal california state u universe versity san Bern bernardino for diet dietetic i'm sorry i got sick on that Di dietic interns that's a weird i think that's the weird yeah. dietetic dietetic okay in interns, can I get a mo motion to to approve? Turner motion to approve. Webster by second. Webster by second. We're open for discuss discussion. Hearing none, call for the vote. Trustee Webster, aye. Trustee Turner, Turner aye. Trustee LaFrench, LaFrench aye. Trustee Benz, Benz aye. Motion passes five zero. Four zero. All right, going on to 15.10 human re resource sources approval for the board of trustees of an increase in the med medical insurance cap to 18,652 effective J July 1st, 2022, and an increase to life insur insurance to 150. Fifty thousand dollars effective Jul July first to twenty twenty two. Can I get a mo motion to approve? Turn around motion. Okay. Can I get a sec second? Webster, I second. Okay. We're open for discuss discussion. I wish Ekis was here because she she's the one that brought this agenda, but it's okay. Um, she's not here. Uh, okay. I have no comment. Okay. Well, I have none too. Uh, can I get a, a vote, please? Trustee Webster? Aye. Trustee Turner? Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench? LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz? Trustee Bansai, motion pa passes for zero. zero. Move, moving on to 15.11, human re resource sources. Approval of the proposed in increase in life, life insur insurance for C C CSEA bar bargaining unit members from 20,000 to 50,000 effective Ju July 1st, 2022. Can I get a mo motion to approve? Turn around motion to approve. And can I get a sec second? Left French, I second. Left French. Okay, I'll give that to Left French. 
We're open for discussion. Discussion. Hearing none, call for the vote. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Turner. Turner. Aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Mo motion mo passes for zero. Okay, move, move, moving on to 15.12, approval of the proposed in increase of the health insurance premium cap for S for CSEA bar bargaining unit mem members effective J July 1st, 2022. Can I get a mo motion to approve? Turn a motion to approve. And can I get a sec second? Left I second. Thank you. We're open for discussion. discussion. Hearing none, call for the vote. Trustee Webster. Aye. Trustee Turner. Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Motion passes for zero. Okay, so we should, we need to motion to go back to closed session, session for the tab, tabled item of 3.03. Turner, Can motion. Okay, so Webster, I second. Let me get a motion, uh, tabled motion, because I'm out of second. Okay, so we've got a motion by Trustee Turner, second by Trustee Webster. Can I get a vote, please? Trustee Webster, aye. Trustee Turner, Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench, LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz, uh, Trustee Benz, aye. Motion passes for zero okay we uh the time is now nine four forty nine Okay, thank you. Um, I the time is now ten four forty three. I need a roll roll call, please. Trustee Webster. Here. Trustee Turner. Here. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench present. Trustee Benz. Benz pres present. The time is yep ten four four forty four. Okay, so re regard guarding item 3.003, the, the board has take taken act action to, to appoint Mr. Mike Mike Michael Krause um, as in in interim soup super in intendant in with sig signature uh, authority be begin getting Jul July 1st, 2022. And that's it. Okay. Okay. So going on to six sixteen uh, adjourn adjournment. I need a mo motion to approve. A motion to adjourn. Turner. Okay. I need a se second. Webster second. Okay. Webster second. Call for for the vote. Vote, please. Trustee Webster. Oh, aye. Trustee Turner. Turner, aye. Trustee LaFrench. LaFrench, aye. Trustee Benz. Benz, aye. Mo, mo motion pa passes for zero, zero. The time is now 10 forward 45. Please have a good night.